members of the gang suppression unit on May 16, 2012, searched number 7476 Jimmy Dyer Avenue shortly before 6 in the morning and recovered a large quantity of retailed crack, cannabis, and powdered cocaine stored in the bathroom, kitchen, and the veranda. Various denominations of both U.S. and Belize currencies, totaling $7,606 Belize dollars, were also found stashed inside the two-story wooden structure. The search also yielded a bulletproof vest, a pair of handcuffs, a government license plate, two homemade balaclavas, one with bloodstains visible around the eye holes, digital scales, a modified bong, and gold jewelry, including a belt buckle emblazoned with the George Street insignia. Interestingly, while a holster for a revolver was discovered, there was no weapons or ammunition found on the property. While he was not present for the search, 40-year-old Brian Brown, who had ties to the George Street gang, was charged with seven counts of drug possession and possession of the vest under the Firearms Act after turning himself in following several days on the run. It took just shy of four years to begin trial on uh, April 8, 2016, with Brown represented by Dickie Bradley and senior counsel Ellis Arnold. Court reports say there were a number of adjournments during trial, the last coming on September 19th. Brown had suffered severe burns in the intervening period between his arrest and trial, and the adjournments were requested by his attorneys to tend to his medical condition. However, Brown participated at trial and confirmed in his own defense that he was not at the residence at the time. He said he never lived at that address, did not control it, and had nothing to do with it. Magistrate Mendoza, in making his ruling today, said that Brown's absence during the GSU search brought doubt to him as to whether it was legal, and that alternatively, the GSU could have done a sting operation to ensure that no one lived at the address except for Brown, whose expired passport and birth certificate were also found. With that, the magistrate had no choice but to set Brown free. Aaron Humes reporting for News 5.